Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and create this drawing. And as you can see, a lot of the numbers are much larger. And this typically denotes that it's metric. In tutorial 5, we talked about how to go into the setup and create a metric drawing. We're going to go ahead and review it again here. So let's go and open up a new drawing. We're making it from scratch and we're setting it to metric. For this particular one, I'm going to go to Format, Units, and changing that to zero points after the decimal. I'm also going to go to my Drawing Limits and set the limits at negative 250, comma 150, sorry, comma negative 150. and the upper limits to 250, comma, 150. We want to make sure that I can see my grid. So I'm going to go to my settings down here under my uh, grid display. And I want those set at 10 and 10. Turn it to the 2D model space so we can see the little dots. Make sure your grid is on and your snap is on, and we're going to click OK. Alright, when we go up to View, we're going to check a couple of things. First off, we want to make sure that under Display, we have our Origin check to on. There should be a check mark. And our UCS icon should also be to on. We're going to go to Zoom, and instead of going to All, this time we're going to go to Extents. As a matter of fact, sometimes that doesn't work. Uh, what should happen is your icon should pop up right here. If it doesn't happen right away, check out the View tab and click on Extents here instead. Now we're going to set up our main drawing. Uh, for first putting in circles, we're going to click here and identify a center and a diameter. We want to start it right in the middle of our origin. So we could type in 00, zero but since I have the snap turned on, I can just click on it. And the major diameter of this is 50. Okay, we're going to set up our two little circles. And instead of clicking on circle again, I'm just going to hit spacebar. That repeats the last command. Uh, I want the center of this circle to be at 70 comma 40 and I want it to be to have a radius of 25 I want another circle at negative 50 60 so I'm gonna hit spacebar again type in negative 50 comma negative 60 And here's another one where I want the diameter to be 25. That is the default, so I can just hit enter. Uh, this circle doesn't look quite right to me, so I'm going to delete that and take another look at it. I had originally clicked diameter. I meant to click radius. That's going to make quite a difference. So let's switch it back to 50. And that should look much more like the picture you have in front of you. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our object snap toolbar. So a lot of times in AutoCAD programs, they make these super useful functions that you have to kind of search for a little bit. Um, ours is located under Tools, Toolbars, AutoCAD, and you can see there's quite a few different toolbars located within AutoCAD. Uh, we want the object snap toolbar. They're all alphabetical order, so we're going to click on that one. And what this will allow me to do is, well, let's turn off the snap mode for a second. We're just going to use the object snap toolbar. Um, they have a whole bunch of different things on here. It allows lines and circles and arcs to be snapped to an object. So let's look at what some of these are. We have a temporary track point snap from, snap to an end point, snap to a midpoint, 
snap to an intersection, snap to an apparent intersect, extension, center, quadrant, tangent. There's all kinds of different things here. You can read through them yourself. We're going to click on line and focus on snap to tangent. We want to connect the little circle to the big circle. So I click on the little circle and it's going to adjust where that line is after I choose my next point. Okay, I want it to also be tangent to this big circle, so I'm going to click on snap to tangent again and click up here. Okay, right click enter to cancel that command and I want to do the same thing to the other side. Perfect. Now if you look at the drawing in front of you, we have a couple different radiuses down here. We're going to use a different circle option than we've used in the past. Uh, this time we're going to go ahead and use the tangent tangent radius. This means it's tangent to two objects and has a radius defined by the user, you. So I want it to be tangent to these two circles. And if you look at the radius in the picture, the tangent of that should be 50. So I'm going to type in 50 and hit enter. And I also want a circle that's going to be tangent, tangent, radius here to these two. But that only has a radius of 40. So I type in 40 and click enter. We're most of the way there. Now we're going to use the trim command. And the trim command can be a little tricky at first. Uh, what it asks you to do is to first select the objects that are around what you want to trim, that are bordering what you would like to trim. So I want to trim off this section and this section. The two objects that are touching those are this top line and this line here. I'm going to right click, which takes me into the next section, and it wants me to tell the computer what I'm trimming. So I'm trimming off this part and this part. I'm going to right click and hit enter and that'll cancel out of the trim command. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. Right click and tell it what you would like to get rid of. We're going to do the same type of thing for these two circles. Those circles are inside of these. Perfect. Now we're most of the way there. We have a couple of funny looking objects inside of our circles, so we're going to use the polygon command. Uh, the first shape is a hexagon and polygon. Uh, your screen should just say rectangle up here. There's a drop down next to it for a polygon. When you click on it, it asks you for how many sides your shape has. We know that a hexagon has six sides. And then it asks you to specify a center point. Uh, we actually want it to be right here in the middle of this, but just to make sure we get it right, uh, we're going to go ahead and type in 0, comma 0 and hit enter. Now it gives us an option for an inscribed or a circumscribed shape. We want it to be a circumscribed shape. That means that it's, if you were to have a circle and the polygon, it would fit around the outside of the circle. If it's inscribed, that means it fits inside of a circle. Okay, and now we're going to specify the radius of that circle. Uh, we know that it should be 30. All right, half the diameter is the radius. So there is our hexagon. And now we're going to go ahead and use that same polygon tool again to put our square up here. We're going to use our object snap toolbar to make sure that we get it in the right center. I'm going to click on uh, 
Uh, I know what I skipped. Okay. Polygon. I first have to tell it how many sides I want. With a square, there's only four sides. Now I get to specify the center. I'm going to click center. Now I can click on my shape. I do want it uh, circumscribed again. And our square should be... How big is our square? I believe that's 10. Perfect. Uh, now we just have one more shape to throw in there. That's the little circle that goes here. So we're going to click on uh, circle again. Center radius is fine. It does highlight the center for us. But again, this object snap toolbar just kind of makes sure that you get it right. You don't have to click on that. You can just click on the outside of the shape. And that little circle that goes inside there should have a radius of 10. Alright, so now we should have exactly what we wanted.